Hello everyone, this is Julien Dubois from Microsoft. Today we are going to talk directly to Azure using a new tool that I've created, which is called Azure CLI MCP. As the name suggests, it's an MCP server, Model Context Protocol. It's a new hype and cool protocol that allows LLMs, large language models, to use tools and to act for you. So they become agents. That's what we call agentic. LLMs that we can use here are GPT-4.0 or Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, which are modern LLMs which are able to use those tools. So let's have a look at what it can do and how we can work with it with a pretty complex example. Here it is. So it's this repo called GDBOA Longchain 4J Demo. It's a Java project that I use for my demos. And we're going to use an LLM with GitHub uh, Copilot Chat and the Azure CLI MCP server to deploy that application to the cloud without knowing much about Azure. So let's open it up here in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see in my Visual Studio Code instance, I've configured GitHub Copilot chat to be in agent mode, to use Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, and of course, to use my tool, the Azure CLI MCP server. So, here, GitHub Copilot can now execute Azure CLI commands. Now, let's start with the first easy to use command. So I'm going to ask it, in my Azure subscription, which resource groups are tagged with env egal demo? Let's see if it can access my Azure subscription and request some data from it. So it's going to execute the Azure CLI command. We'll see it's really good at creating Azure CLI commands because there's a lot of examples and training data on Azure CLI. So it executed it, it found my resource group, its location, and uh, well, tell me it's the only one with a tag. Let's have a look here in my uh, uh, portal. If I go to tag, this one has got indeed a, a tag on equals demo, and that's the resource group I want to use. So let's tell Copilot chat that we want to use that resource group from now on. So let's use it. And now that we use that resource group, we're going to deploy our application to it. And for this, I'm going to do something extremely simple. I'm just going to tell it, I know there's a Docker image here, well, take it and deploy that application to container apps, which is an Azure service that is made for deploying Docker images. It's a very good service, but it's not easy to use at first sight. I didn't tell it anything. It's going to find out how it can take my app and deploy it automatically. So it's asking me to run a few commands. We're going to go through them uh, one by one. So first of all, it had a look at my environment. It found my Docker file. And it said, okay, if you want to use it, well, we, you need to build it. So it told me, yeah, let's run this command. And now run this other command to check if everything was done correctly. Yes, my image was built, wonderful. So okay, you've got the Docker image. Uh, now it seems that uh, you want to, 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 to push it to the cloud. For this, in order to use Azure Container Apps, you need something which is called Azure Container Registry, which is here. We didn't tell it to create it, but it just knows it, it needs it. So it's going to create one for us and it's going to log into it once it's created. Here it is. Let's just go quickly to the portal to see what it did. Uh, sorry, it was the portal, uh, refresh. So our container registry is here. So we just created this for us. And if we go inside it, there's no, nothing in our repository yet. It's going to push our image to it. So it logged into it. It says, okay, well, if you want to use, to, to use it, you need first to tag your, your, uh, your image, and then it's going to push the image to it. Yeah, let's go, let's push it. It takes some time to push the image and once the image is pushed, it will be able to use it into Azure Container Apps. So it's going to wait a little bit until it's pushed. Here it is. It's good. And now it should be able to take that image that is created locally to our Docker container, uh, 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 to our container registry on Azure. It's checking that everything is good. So it verifies that our Docker image was built locally. It created the container registry. It logged into it, tagged and pushed the image, enabled admin access to be able to pull it from container apps uh, um, 
that container apps can take that uh, image from the registry. And now it's going to create a container apps environment. Again, something we didn't tell it, but if you want to use container apps, you need a container app environment in order to have your applications in it. So it's creating it for us. Let's just have a look in the registry. So first of all, let's have a look at in our resource group, refresh. So we have a new uh, container apps environment where our application will be deployed. Uh, it's going to use the registry that we created. Oh, if we go in inside it, if we go to repositories, we should find our image. Here it is. That was pushed just a few seconds ago. And also we've got a workspace that was created here uh, that is used to store the logs of our container apps environment. So it created a registry, an app environment, and a workspace uh, for log, log analytics so that everything works correctly. Once everything will be configured, our app will be deployed here to apps inside our content apps environment. Let's have a look at what's going on right now. So it's creating the app that takes some time. So just let's just wait a little bit until that process finishes and we'll go back to continue. Okay, so our command succeeded. So our container apps environment should have been created and it's going to take the image from the container registry to container apps. Let's see if it works. And, and it had an issue, it didn't work. Why did not it work? It's because I'm using a Mac and we build that image on the Mac and we deploy it to Linux, so it doesn't work. It needs to be built for Linux. So it, it saw the issue, it said, I see the issue, and it's proposing to fix the issue, so I'm, of course, agreeing on that. It's going to rebuild the image for Linux. It's going to push it again to the container registry, and then it's going to deploy it again. What we see here is something really cool with the Azure CLI MCP server, is that I configure it to try three times before giving up and to learn from its mistakes. So if the first command fails, it reads the error message, tries to fix it, and then deploy it again, which is, of course, pretty smart. And it's taking some time to build everything. Let's wait a little bit until it's finished. Here it is. Should be good. So it's deploy its pushing that, you, that new image. Yes, build it again. And now we're going to push it just after that to Azure Container Registry. So telling me what it did, it learned from it, built it again, tagging it again, this time with MD64 tag. So it's compatible with our app service, uh, our container apps environment on Linux. And yes, continue to iterate because it failed a bit. Push it. It's pushing it. And this time it's going to deploy it. So that should be cool. The image is pushed. It's checking if it's pushed correctly. It's often checking if things are correct before doing stuff, which is, of course, uh, really nice uh, because we, we do this in production, maybe. <laughs> uh, now that the image is correctly pushed, it's going to push it to the registry and try to deploy it again. And this time it might work or not. We'll see what happens and if it can fix what fails. So it's creating the container app again. Let's go to the portal to see it in action. Here it is, refresh, here it is. Our application is here. Let's click a little bit. Uh, it's supposed to be running, such so running. The container is here. So it's using the container that we just configured earlier, like the registry is here. Uh, it's probably not scaled uh, with something very big. Uh, by default, it's 0 0.5. Um, uh, CPU. So let's have, oh, it failed. Let's have a look at what happened and hope we can fix this. So 
It says, so we deployed everything with one CPU core. Uh, why not? It's, it's Java. Maybe we need more. Maybe, maybe we could do with less. Uh, not too bad. Uh, it says, the application should be running here. Let's, let's click. And in fact, it didn't run. Oh. So probably something failed. And it seems to be a little bit broken. So let's have a look at what's happening. So we're going to ask it to have a look at the logs and to tell us what happened. So again, I'm not even... I don't even know how to look at the logs here in, in uh, Azure Cotton Apps. I'm just asking, look at the logs and tell me what's happening and find out the issues and maybe fix them if you can. So it's going to fetch the logs for me and it's going to tell me hopefully what failed from the, from the logs. Okay, it got the logs. It's analyzing it, hopefully. And... What's happening in that is that, oh, we're missing some environment variables. Of course, I forgot. You need to have Azure OpenAI endpoint uh, configured because we're connecting to another OpenAI instance uh, and we need to, to set it up. Uh, so it's going to have a look and try to find uh, that variable somewhere. So it's going to continue checking all my different files here. And so, okay, it's missing this environment variable, and this also one, you found another one that was also missing. Oh, that's bad. So you need an endpoint and you need a key to connect to, to that endpoint. And uh, it's going to update my user container apps instance to have those environment variables set up for me, and then it's going to try to start them again. Uh, let's have a look here at our application here. If we go back here, um, if we go to it, uh, containers, sorry. So here it is. Let's go to environment variables. And uh, indeed, we don't have any environment variables yet. So it probably needs to be set up in order to deploy our app correctly. So so it created our environment variables here with some placeholders. It's going to deploy it again, but of course, it cannot work because the environment variables are not set. It just put placeholder in them. So it's going to do something smarter. It's having a look. If I have some Azure OpenAI instances running somewhere in my cloud, and it's going to use it to configure my um, environment variables. As we can see, if it found two of them, including one in my resource group, so obviously that's the one we want to use, and it's going to use it and fix the environment variables by using the parameters from my OpenAI instance. So if we go back here, and we refresh environment variables. Here they are. It did put the environment variables with the correct values in order to deploy my app. Wonderful. So it did that, started the app again, and it's going to check if now everything works. So again, I didn't tell it anything. It was able to understand from my code that I needed two environment variables, I mean, from the logs and the code. It was smart enough to find that there was a service in my resource group that would probably be useful to configure those variables, uh, so the endpoint and the, and, the, um, and the key. And it set up everything for me, and it's resetting the application for me. So now it's failing again. Oh, yeah, I had forgotten. I had more environment variable. I also need an Azure Search endpoint and an Azure Search endpoint key. Exactly the same issue as before. It's going to have a look in my subscription and especially my resource group. Do I have an, uh, um, um, a search on environment uh, ready? It's going to find it. It's going to, here it is. It's going to use it and update my container app with those new environment variables. Here it is. So now it's set up my open AI on point and key, my Azure search on point and key. Updating everything and redeploying everything again. Let's refresh here again. And here they are, everything is here. And so now my application should be running uh, pretty soon. Yeah, here it is. It says, yeah, continue to iterate, but yeah, it's running. We, we already see it, it's running here. Let's go there. And here's my application running and using like, especially like if I ask it a question, here, this is working with Azure OpenAI. So it can connect to the Azure OpenAI instance and, and give me an answer. So what we, so here is that 
GitHub Copilot chat, thanks to the Azure CLI, MCP was able to deploy our app completely, including setting up environment variables that were not easy or obvious to find initially, just iterated and found them in my uh, resource group and configured everything uh, by itself. That, so that's pretty cool. Now let's go a little bit further. Um, so first of all, my app was deployed with only one uh, uh, CPU environment that might not be enough for me. Uh, I want to have more, so I'm going to well, I'm going to pause this because it's still syncing. Stop syncing. Okay, pause it. Uh, so I would like love my application to have more CPU. So let's ask it a question like this: Can you give two vCPU to my application instead of one? And that's a trick question, and you will see why uh, as soon as it fails. So it's increasing it from one CPU to two CPU, so it's better, wonderful. It's running it. It's going to fail because on uh, Cotton Apps, when you give more CPU, you also need to give more RAM. And it failed again, and as we saw earlier, when it fails, it learns from its mistakes, and it's running it again with uh, a, a solution. So that's what it did. Now it's giving it more CPU and more RAM. And my application will be up and running soon with more CPU and RAM. So if we go back to our demo here, uh, we're going to see that it has, uh, if I refresh it, we're going to see that it went from one CPU to two CPU. Yeah, here it is, two CPU instance with four gig, with two, two CPU with four gigs of RAM. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but you might say, okay, uh, we have everything running and we're happy about that, but in production, maybe I wouldn't use it. Well, first of all, as we just saw, everything worked quite well uh, out of the box, but yeah, maybe it's a little bit too risky. Uh, one nice thing we can do, that I would do, is transform everything we've done into a Terraform script. So we have something clean and reproducible. So I'm asking, can you create a Terraform script that does all of the above easily? And so it's going to take everything we've done, create a Terraform script, and next time, we're going to be able to run all of this with confidence in production. And here is my Terraform script arriving. Okay, I hope you've had a lot of fun with me talking with Azure, deploying everything, seeing stuff fail, and see uh, Claude uh, 3.7 Sonnet here fixing them on the fly and trying again and, and succeeding. Uh, of course, it's a demo, but it's working really fine. And I hope to improve this in, in the next uh, few months to have something really cool for everyone. Thank you. Oh, sorry, it was a script. Whoa, wonderful. That's not something I would have been able to do easily by myself, of course.